All right, let's move into our punt return again. We call it PBR. I know some of you guys are thinking other things right now, but PBR is punt block return for us here when I was at NIU and here at Temple University. Okay, I like doing these together because you can work punt protection versus hold up. You can work coverage hold up versus coverage. I think there's two good things to work together. So the first thing we're going to get into is claw mirror. If we are going to hold somebody up, we teach claw or mirror. That's two different things. So we're going to put a punt player right there and a punt player right there. Obviously, our punt return guy, our PBR guy is right there. We start him in the head up position. What we tell our guys, and I got this from an NFL team in Tennessee about seven, eight years ago, okay, if they come at us, if that punt player that I'm responsible for comes at me to protect, I'm going to claw him. The claw for us is hands outside on the tips of the shoulder pads. You guys, I'd all be thinking, what the heck are you saying, coach? Okay, no, hands outside, and we are going to hold the crap out of them. Okay, knock on wood, I have not had a holding call on us in, uh, I, I put this in, I think, seven, six, seven years ago, not one time, but it's got to be coached, and it's got to be practiced. At the very start of the drill, we are holding the heck out of the punt team if they come at us, okay? Once they get out of our, our range and our, our path, we got to let them go and get into phase, which we'll talk about, okay? So that's claw technique. We are going hands outside, tip of the shoulder pad, and steering them. They're going to obviously try to take us inside. That's fine. We'll be in control, okay? If they go away from us, guys, we're going to shuffle mirror it and then just get into phase. You will not get the claw technique. So as I run this film, let's look down here at 35's rep on the, uh, on the left 45-yard line. Okay, look at those wide hands. I love when they wear white gloves or sleeves. Look at how wide this kid shoots his hands. Absolutely perfect. Bam, snatches that in the claw technique because 35 comes at me to protect. Now, I'm going to hold him and keep him in front of me as long as I can. If that is six seconds in the entire play, I win, and you're probably special teams player of the day. Okay, so stay right there, shuffle my feet low pad level, my helmet's below his chin, fighting through the whole drill. Now, what's critical, and I told you guys this, what is absolutely critical if you're going, going to use this hold-up technique, and you got to mix in with some rushes and bully rush and different things, but if you're using this technique, you've got to teach from day one, when this kid gets outside the framework of my body, I let go. The fight is over, and I get into face, and that's critical. That's not just me talking on a clinic here on a tape, guys. You got to be hauling butt out there if you see a kid doing it, or else you will get called for holding. Okay, that's the first question everybody asks me, you know, isn't that holding? Yes, it is holding, but only if they call it, right? For us defensive guys, heck, they don't call that holding stuff, right? That's also not where the ref's looking on this play. Okay, so really good rep by that guy on, uh, on 35 and on this left 45-yard line. That's a really darn good rep by that young man. Okay, a couple of you guys, uh, you know, I'll flip back and forth. Hopefully you get a chance to watch it. If you watch my kickoff stuff that, that we did, I talked to you guys about how we start in our stances in those kickoff drills that we teach. It's exactly what we got going right here. My knee is over my toe so I can explode forward with no wasted movement. Really great look at it right there. Knee over my toe, wait for it so I can explode to it. Okay, so we carry that over into all of our drills. This is on the kickoff tape. I talked about that when we covered. Try to use those things throughout all your special teams because you guys know that dang depth chart is going to change. Injuries, guys being tired, guys that the head coach says, hey, I'm done using him because he's our only corner. Whatever it might be, we all know we go through it. So teach all the guys the little things in all your phases and all your drills. Okay, so Claude Mir, ball goes away from us in any case. Let's look at number four right here on the 50. The guy's going away, so my guy's about to shoot his hands, but realizes it's probably going to end up being a shuffle mirror, so he's not going to try to hold him quite as much. Probably gets his hands on him better than I thought he would, but I want to make sure that when they go away and they're not quite in those tight quarters, I don't want as much of, of my hands on the hold-up shoulder pads, on the tips of the shoulder pads outside. And here you go. Right now... This kid is getting outside the framework of my body. I've got to let go and get into phase, which we'll talk about phase drill in a minute, but it's, uh, you know, it's all uh, defense, uh, DB, wide receiver play where we're in the hip pocket, hand combat, 
trying to stay right in that back hip pocket so we can finish the uh, the block at the end of the play. We'll, we'll get into some of that in a minute. But it's a good job by that kid really letting go. Right now, you got to let go. There it is. You just saw his hand come off right now because teams are obviously going to say, Coach, they're holding, watch them, blah, blah, blah. That's fine. Get off there and get ready to get in the face. So it's, it takes a lot of discipline to do that. Okay, let's look at this is that same number 40. This is our Akron game this year. Watch number 40 on the left side of your screen. Okay, I love our knee over toe stance. If you were to just pull on our tape right now, you'd say Temple's rushing. Some of those guys are going. I would probably say about all of them are probably going. Now, I don't think we even go at all in this clip. Watch number 40 on the left side. Now, this kid hops around all over the place. We're, he's a young freshman for us. We're trying to get him out of it. But boom. Look at that hand placement. His helmet's below Akron's helmet. I love where we're at. I'd like to see him a little lower always, but that's us as coaches. But right now, we are in control. Number 40 is winning all day. Now, right here, he throws him off and he gets outside the framework of his body. If number 40 keeps fighting and holds right there, it's game over. We're going to get a penalty. But 40 does a nice job of letting go and getting in the face. But look at that. His guy is anywhere between three to six yards deeper, further back than any of the other cover guys because he used our technique the best. The other guys missed their guys. 42 on the right side is not as physical doing. He's just kind of patting him on the shoulder pad. 37's trying, but heck, the guy at Akron kicked his butt and threw him off. But you can see the difference at how far away – my guy is because I wanted the line of scrimmage. We don't need to have some fancy schemed up return. If you win your one-on-one, -on -one, look at all this space we're going to have right there. If 37 would have beat that kid even a little bit more, we got a ton of space going to the field right there. Okay. 